All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own self-inking stamp. So what I'm gonna start with is an old self-inking stamp that I already have. So I bought this a long time ago before I got a Glowforge and it had my previous address, but we've moved. So I actually wanna swap that out with something new. So the first tip is you're going to push this down and we're gonna remove the old stamp. So I'm gonna click those little red buttons on the side there and that's gonna give me access to the stamp. And depending on which kind of mechanism you have, it might be a little bit different. So this is a Trodap Printy. And for this one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna push it down and then you're just gonna press these. There's a little sort of little depression there. And when you click that, it's gonna lock it into place. And that's gonna give you access to the stamping surface. Now this is actually when I purchased blank, so it doesn't have a stamp in it. And we'll look at that one a little bit later. To release it, you're just gonna push and it's going to release. Now with this style, which is an ideal, I believe is the brand, it has like a little um, piece you're gonna click out. So I'm gonna do that. And then I usually have to kind of release it a little bit just to get access to that. And you can see that's like the carrier plate is what I'm gonna call it um, for the stamp. And now these things can sometimes be really stuck and it took me a little bit to get this off, but I have, and now I'm going to peel it away. And then you should have a nice smooth surface here. So if you don't, just use some goo gone or whatever you have to do to remove that. Now, based on the height of the stamp, which may vary, so you can see with this one I just took, I just use my calipers to figure out the height. It's different depending on which stamp, but um, essentially it works out to be the exact thickness of, here's my example here, of the stamping rubber that I normally use and one piece of foam. So this is self-adhesive foam, which has a sticky side to it, which is gonna make things a little bit easier for me. And then what you would just do is reapply this to this carriage plate. But let's, before we do that, let's actually test something else here. So I have these little like clear stamps you can get at Michael's and you can see the thickness is really pretty close to the stamp here. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm just gonna apply it to the surface here. And it doesn't stick great, but you could use a little bit of double stick tape if you wanted to. I just wanna see if this can be reusable. So I'm gonna show you something that I've noticed, which we're gonna solve in a minute. So I'm gonna push that open, click that into place, let that ink, and then I'm gonna stamp it. And you can see we have a problem. So why is my stamp missing areas? And this will be obvious if I push out the ink here. So we have a stamping pad here and you can see mine, it's hard to see on camera, but it is so old that the actual impression of the original stamp is depressed into the surface to the point where there's highs and lows. So that's not gonna work for me anymore. So I'm gonna have to get rid of this one because nothing I do, I can re-ink this, but I can't get rid of the like bumps and valleys that were formed by the old stamp resting against it. So instead I have purchased a new one and I just inked it because this came with no ink on it. So I just used some rubber stamp ink. Um, you need to let this soak in for a while, which I have not done. So you're gonna see what's gonna happen in this video. So all the ink right now is very much on the surface. It's, it's sunk in a little bit, but it's gonna be a little bit um, too wet when I do this, but you'll at least get to see. So I'm gonna replace the ink cartridge here, the ink pad, and now you can see I have way too much ink right now, but I am able to get the full surface of the impression. So this is just a matter of over inking my pad, which will, it'll get better if I let it sit for a while. So I don't know exactly how long you really need to do that. Um, I imagine at least like 48 hours. But that at least shows you that you can use pre-made stamps for your design. So in this case, you can see it's shifted and that's because I didn't stick it down with anything. But I'm gonna pull this out. If I were going to do this in a different way, what I might do is I'm gonna take my rubber foam here. Or actually, let's use this um, logo design here. So what I've actually done is I have engraved and cut my stamps, which you will probably see in this video or a different one because I did record it. And I added a sticky layer to my foam, or this one actually came with a sticky layer. 
So in this case, because I didn't flip it, I can't use the sticky layer for that. So instead, I'm gonna place it on here. And now what I could have done, which would have been very smart, but I didn't, I chose not to do it for this, is I could have applied some 3M adhesive to the back of this stamp and then just peeled it and stuck it to there. So that would be the ideal way to do it. Use self-adhesive foam and then apply some 3M to this. Because I do not have that applied, I'm actually going to grab some just plain double stick tape because um, this will work. I'm just going to do this temporarily. I will probably just go cut some 3M to match. But we just want to test this right now. So that's what we're going to do. You can see I'm already covered in ink because I did test this a little bit earlier. Take some scissors. And just trim that away. So this is your backup option if you don't have 3M. But... It will definitely be easier if you do. And then I'm gonna line it up with the foam pad. And so the reason I have the foam pad is a couple different reasons. This stamp rubber is a little bit harder than the sort of jelly stamp rubber that was in the original stamp. And then additionally, it brings it up to the correct height to work with this stamping mechanism. So I'm going to push that down, snap that back into place, and then for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use the old like beat up stamp pad because the ink coverage is better. And then just let it ink up a couple times. And I should be able to stamp. And you can see that is a really nice crisp impression. So let's try that one more time. Looks like I had it perfect. Let's re-ink a couple times. There we go. So you can see, I actually have a lot of detail in that stamp. And when I eventually get this one sort of settled in, I'm gonna have a perfect stamp every time. You're gonna have really nice, consistent, even stamps. So that stamping rubber works perfect for these. And it's really, really easy to change these out. Now, if I wanna remove this, all I would do is take my face plate out and then just get rid of it. So we're gonna test something else in a minute but I'm gonna show you my circular one here. So this one did come with a blank ink pad, which you can see is not in here, it's empty at the moment. But for the purpose of the stamping plate, let's take a look at the stamp I have designed for that. So this one I have a nice circle, and in this case I'm going to peel, and I'm gonna stick it to my stamp instead. So I'm doing it kind of opposite order here. And that is gonna be a nice, even impression. I'm sorry, if you can hear the snoring of my cat in the background, I apologize, but I'm not gonna wake her up for the purpose of this video. So sorry, everyone. Um, so now what I could do is, I actually do like to sometimes use the double stick tape instead of the 3M adhesive, because although it works really well, I can always peel it off later and replace the design with something else. So I'm just gonna add a little strip of double stick tape. It's gonna work perfectly fine. Um, if you were gonna do something more permanent, I would use the 3M, but otherwise this will work. And now I'm going to take a look at where the top is, and I'm just going to place that into the carriage here, and then it's good to go. Now this stamp is gonna work perfect once I actually ink up my inking plate. So this is the box that came in, and it came with a blank ink cartridge here. I keep wanting to call it a cartridge. I know it's not a cartridge. It's definitely a stamp pad, but that'll work. And then if I open the box and dump it out, it also comes with this nice little circle, which is really cool because you can actually place that inside of this top piece here. I'm not really sure if you push this up or out. I'm not, not gonna break it at the moment. I think you squeeze, something like that. You can take this off, I promise. Um, I just have to look in the instructions. And then you can stamp your stamp, line it up in here, and you'll always know which direction to place your stamp. But I will show you how to ink this pad up. So I'm actually gonna ink it with orange ink, and this is a Trodat orange ink. I also have the black. And it's just a matter of saturating the pad and letting it soak in. So you don't have to, I think, overdo it more. I'm just using the tip to kind of spread it around. I imagine if you overdo it, you can kind of blot at it with paper towels to soak some of the excess up. But really, whenever you do any kind of stamp, including like a flash stamp, which is done with like UV exposure and you wash it out and all that. 
um, you just need to let these sit for a while because they're otherwise you're gonna have way too much loose ink and you're gonna get that sort of smeared impression that we saw in our earlier design. So let's let that just soak in for a second. I'm actually gonna take a receipt here, an old receipt, and I'm just gonna see if I can blot a little bit of it off. So you can see our nice orange ink. Let's drop that in and at least give it a test, even though I know it's gonna be a little bit over inked. So with this design, you can see here, the stamping pad goes in the back. Can't tell which direction, I think it's omnidirectional here. Click it in. And then it looks like my distance is good because I can see the ink on the surface. To remove this one, you press this little button and it will push this out the back. But let's go back here, take a blank piece there. And you can see, there's my stamp. So it's just a matter of letting the ink saturate and getting that right with the stamp. But there you go. So we have some, it looks like we're gonna have some really good detail here once the ink settles in there, but we'll come back and check those out later. But that essentially gives you an idea of how to use these for both um, your Glowforge stamp rubber and then also reusable stamps like what we have here. So if you wanted to make this interchangeable, you can use the double stick tape like I have. You can see that peels up relatively easily. Or well, one other option that's kind of something I'm testing that I haven't fully figured out yet is this is like clear gel carpet tape. It's really sticky and it's the correct thickness here that I don't need any foam. So we're gonna give that just a really quick try. We'll give it a shot here. I'm gonna cut a smaller piece than I need because if it's too wide, it gets like all caught up in the mechanism. That is something I did discover. So in this case, I'm gonna try something. I'm just gonna stick the sticky side down here, peel up my double stick tape. Looks like I need to trim it down. And this is, I have plenty of this, so I'm just gonna be kinda loose with it. I'm gonna place it on. And then I actually have like a peelable layer here. So I'm guessing that if I take the little clearer layer off, I could stick other stamps to this and then change them out. Or if I leave the clear layer on, let me find out if these reusable stamps will stick to it. So this is gonna be a mystery. So I have a whole little set of these reusable stamps. These are designed to stick to like a clear, I'm assuming it's like acrylic or some kind of pla like clear plastic like that. I think it's acrylic block. So they should stick to some plastics. If I stick it to this, it sticks relatively well, so we'll give that a shot. Ink that up a few times, and then we'll give it a test here. So you can see that does work. Once again, my ink is smearing because it hasn't soaked into the pad yet, but that would allow you to make interchangeable stamps. Now, it seems like if we peel this off, we probably can stick it with a lot more force there. So it's definitely gonna stick on there. It's not moving now. So let's try that one again. And if you find your thickness isn't right, you can just look for a different thickness foam or you can add an additional layer of like, for example, like really thin acrylic or cardstock and just glue it down to the surface of your plate. But that should give you an idea of how to set these up. So now that I'm finished with that, I'm actually just gonna peel this carpet sticky stuff away. It's like very flexible, but it's pretty easy to work with and it does come off without like leaving a nasty surface. It's also like washable. Now you can see that's not really a reusable piece, but you can just rinse it and it will get its stickiness back. So we'll replace this with our original stamp here using a little bit of double stick tape. Or actually, let's go get that um, Brianna case adhesive. I think I have some, some nearby. All right, great. So I have some actual 3M, 
This LSE stands for low surface energy, which means it's for like really slick surfaces. I don't necessarily need that, but um, it will work for this. So I think I'm gonna cut like an approximate shape. Then I'm gonna stick it down. And then from there, I'm gonna cut around it. So let's do that. We'll set up our final permanent version of this stamp. And that'll be that. So my understanding is the LSE side needs to go to the thing it really needs to stick to. So that's the side that you would want the plastic touching. I'm going to drop that in the center and then just use my scissors. So once again, the ideal situation would have been to use my laser to cut this to the exact size, but I didn't for the purpose of this. So we're just gonna skip that. So now we have our completed design. I'm going to peel it back. If I can get my finger under it, which is always the hardest part. And now this is gonna be a much more permanent bond. If you use this stuff, it's not gonna be going anywhere for a long time. So I wanna try and make sure I at least kind of align it. So there we go. Get that centered. Press it into place. And we are good to go. So just letting that ink up. If I look through the back, I can kind of see. Let's move this out of the way. And then we'll just test it real quick. And there you go. So just a matter of letting the ink settle on the stamp and we now have two really nice reusable stamps. So we have that one and then we have the black one here. So. And that's how you make a reusable stamp.